Let's jump in with the number 10 pick. Number 10. I got Baker Mayfield. Now, I was really debating this, uh, but I, I talked to a, I talked to a couple of my friends about, you know, this top 10 list and what they thought about it. And, you know, the, the basically what we've seen so far this season, uh, Baker Mayfield's fifth in QBR, tied for eighth in passing touchdowns, eighth in passer rating, eighth in completion percentage, has more touchdowns and a significantly higher completion percentage in the same time frame as the Rams, uh, as, as like when he was on the Rams last season, four games, he's significantly better. And he's light years above his first four games with Carolina. He has the Bucks leading the the NFC South as uh they, they're three and one right now. Now we thought, at least on this show, yeah, the Bucks with Baker Mayfield, they're gonna implode. There's a chance they could be looking at Caleb Williams. And depending on how you look at it, fortunately or unfortunately, the Bucks may have a viable long-term quarterback in the name of Bacon. Uh, sorry, Baker Reagan Mayfield. So he's at my number 10 on this list. Let's go with the next one. Number nine. Number nine, I got CJ Stroud. The Texans have found their long-term solution in quarterback. I know it's early. It's only week four. We're heading into week five right now. However, he has looked extremely poised under the pocket. Uh, he's fifth in passing yards right now. He's second in yards per completion behind Tua Tunga Vailoa. He's third in yards per attempt behind per, uh, Brock Purdy and Tua. He's fourth in yards per game, ninth in passer rating, and he's one of only three starting quarterbacks without an interception. He is very, very careful with his reads. Nico Collins looks great. Robert Williams looks good. And Tank Dell looks surprisingly efficient being that young. So C.J. Stroud is number nine. Let's go to number eight. Number eight. So number eight is Kirk Cousins. Now he's moved up since my original uh, top ten list. Uh, he's. Uh, I understand. They're one in three. They haven't been able to win any games. However, Kirk himself individually is fourth in passing yards, third in passing yards per game, sixth in passer rating. He's tied for first in passing touchdowns with, surprisingly, this is going to change, but he's right now he's tied for first in passing touchdowns with Justin Fields. He's 10th in completion percentage. He's tied for the, he's tied for the eighth highest graded passer uh, behind, or I guess tied with Lamar and Patrick Mahomes. Uh, I don't love the fact that they were 11-0 in one score games uh, last season, and now they're, what, 1-3 in three now? Um yeah, and probably they should have lost to Carolina. So right now they're one in three in one score games. They probably should have lost to Carolina. It was embarrassing because right now the Panthers are looking for a wide receiver one and they don't have that. However, Kirk himself individually has been absolutely on fire. He's my number eight quarterback. The next one. Number seven. Number seven. I got Jared Goff. He's also moved up slightly in my top ten list. He's the third highest grade passer according to Pro Football Focus. He's sixth in QBR, ninth in completion percentage, ninth in passing yards. He's tied for ninth in big time throws and here's the kicker yes he's top 10 in big time throws he is 26th in turnover worthy plays so he's extremely smart with the football he takes his chances he's, he takes calculator risks and they have paid off because like I said starting like uh, going into the season I really think the uh, Jared Goff in this Lions offense can lead the Lions to their first playoff win in like 30 years. So Jared Goff is my number seven quarterback so far entering week five. Let's go to the next one, which is number six. Number six. I got Lamar Jackson. Now he's moved up, I believe, two spots. He was number eight originally. Now he's number six. Uh, right now he leads the NFL uh, as... as uh, with quarterbacks at least, uh, in rushing yards and rushing touchdowns. He's being incredibly efficient with the football. Now, now the numbers don't really put him in this list. However, what he's done so far this season with an injury-riddled receiver core, and now his offensive line is all banged up. He's second in completion percentage, seventh in pass rating. He's tied for the eighth highest passer, uh, graded passer. Like I said, Kirk Cousins and Mahomes are the other two uh, that are tied with him. I mean, just his efficiency uh, with his top two targets, Rashad Bateman went down. I think Duvernay was dealing with an injury. OBJ is like glass bones and paper skin. And Ronnie Stanley has been banged up. Uh, their center, Linderbaum, is getting absolutely shredded. I mean, right now, the Ravens are going back to the way it used to be. Banged up, bruised, injured, the entire thing. And Lamar has been able to pull out with these wins and, be, and look incredible. So he's my number six quarterback. Number five. Number five. I think a lot of people are going to be shocked by this. But based on his name, that's the only reason why. Numbers-wise, Patrick Mahomes right now for me is the fifth best quarterback. Uh, he has, He's the fifth highest in turnover-worthy plays. He got outplayed by Zach Wilson and Jared Goff. And honestly, a lot of people think... Because the NFL, Taylor Swift, Travis Kelsey, 
Uh, he probably should have lost against the Jets too. But if you get play outplayed by Zach Wilson, if you get outplayed by Jared Goff, and you you are extremely careless with the football, you can't be number one. In my opinion, you can't be even top three. You're number five. However, there is some positive so far to Patrick Mahomes' game this year. He's tied for sixth in passing touchdowns. He's 12th in passing yards. The shocker is he's 21st in completion percentage. And like I said, with, with two other quarterbacks, he's tied for the eighth highest graded passer with Lamar and Kirk Cousins. The Chiefs, the Chiefs offense right now this season does not look as dynamic as it has in the past and right now the story is no longer about this Chiefs offense with Mahomes making miraculous plays it's about Chris Jones and this dominant defense it ain't about Mahomes Mahomes so far this year has taken a hit in my rankings and I think in a lot of people's rankings Based on the numbers, there is no tangible proof that Patrick Mahomes right now is a top three quarterback, and that's just the facts. I'm sorry for all you Patrick Mahomes lovers. That's just the case. Let's go into number four. We're breaking right into the top five. I think a lot of people won't agree with this, number but you four. know what? I think Brock Purdy right now deserves to be in the top five, and this is why. He's first in QBR, first in passer rating, second in yards per attempt, third in completion percentage, third in yards per completion. He joins C.J. Stroud and Joshua Dobbs as the only other starting quarterbacks with Without an interception on the air. I believe he has five touchdowns to no picks. He is still undefeated when he's healthy, a regular season and postseason included. I mean, what Brock Purdy has done so far in, in a very, very small sample size cannot go understated. What he has done is probably one of the greatest starts uh, to an NFL quarterback's career in NFL history. What Bro I understand his team is stacked. However, and Mahomes is really that guy. We saw Brady do it, and that's what Mahomes... Mahomes already being called the greatest quarterback ever. If Mahomes really was the greatest, he should be able to take receivers like Kadarius Tony, like Sky Moore, and, and like all these receivers that aren't, you know, w true wide receiver ones, and elevate them to the next level. Now, he has Travis Kelsey, but in week one, when he didn't have Travis Kelsey, he looked nervous. He did not look all that great. Brock Purdy, what he has done is the same thing Jimmy G has done, except on a safer, I think, slightly more elevated level. He is efficient with the football. Ball, finding the open receivers, he doesn't make the big mistake. However, I think honestly, he actually steers away from big mistakes and actually plays it pretty safe, but it's pretty easy with a stacked team like the 49ers. What Brock Purdy has done is he's lived up to the hype, and right now he's going to play the Cowboys, which we'll talk about you know later on in the show. He has performed to the upteenth degree. He's my number four quarterback so far entering week five. Let's go to number three. Number three. This was a lot of debate. However, I think it makes a lot of sense. Justin Herbert is, is the third best quarterback right now in the NFL. He's second in percentage of on-target throws. Extremely accurate with the football. He's seventh in passing yards, sixth in completion percentage, eighth in passing touchdowns, fifth in pass rating, seventh in QBR, fifth in yards per game. He has a seven touchdown to one interception ratio right there. And honestly... I think a lot of people can see it right now. Justin Herbert is what's keeping the Chargers afloat so far. Brandon Staley, now the defense with Khalil Mack in that last game was very good. He had six sacks. However, it was against Aiden O'Connell and a depleted Raiders offensive line. So what I'm going to say is Justin Herbert right now is the reason why the Chargers are winning or are, are basically winning right now. Uh, he, I mean, for the past few years, it's really been Justin Herbert or bust. It's been coaching and defense that has screwed over Justin Herbert and this Chargers offense into winning more games. What he has done so far is absolutely incredible. He's on one of the best starts to a career. I mean, you look at a 300-yard passing seasons consistent, or 300-yard per game passing seasons. I mean, what he has been doing is incredible. Uh, so Justin Herbert right now is the third best quarterback in the NFL. Let's break down number one and number two. Number two. Number two is Josh Allen. Josh Allen. Now, I think some of you are going to be arguing about two and one. However, uh, Josh Allen just beat Tua Tungavailoa last week and now heads to London to play the Jacksonville Jaguars. Uh, he's first in completion percentage. He's tied for second in big time throws, third in passer rating, third in QBR. He's tied for third in passing touchdowns. And here's sort of why. And you know what? I'll bring up the number one answer just so I can compare and contrast these two. Number one. Number one is Tua Tungavailoa. So, he lost to the Jets in week one, right? Since then, the Bills are scoring 41 points per game. So the offense has absolutely exploded, and right now he currently leads in, in the MVP conversation. However, I'm still nervous about the fact that he's very, very turnover prone. He's tied for sixth right now in the NFL in interceptions. Two, on the other hand, He's first in scoring, first in passing yards a game, first in yards per attempt, first in yards per completion. He's the highest graded quarterback according to Pro Football Focus. He's second in passing yards. Sam Howell played last night, which we'll talk about that game right after my first two topics. Uh, so that'll obviously change. Sam Howell right now is number one in passing yards. 
he'll get obviously get passed when the weekend hits. Uh, to his second in QBR, second in passer rating. He leads right now the most explosive offense. I mean, he, they, they just recently put up 700-plus yards and 70 points. And here's the reason why I put Tua over Josh Allen. When Josh Allen lost and when Tua lost, who looked like the better quarterback? Tua in his loss looks significantly better than Josh Allen in his loss. So yes, they both went 3-1, and yes, Josh Allen did just beat Tua. However, Tua played much better in his loss than Josh Allen did in his. So that's basically what I'm saying. That's my top 10 list right now. Tua 1, Al- or sorry, yeah, Tua 1, Allen 2, Herbert 3, Purdy 4, Mahomes 5, Lamar 6, Goff 7, Kirk 8, Stroud 9, and Baker hits number 10. Hi, everybody. Thanks for watching. Make sure you subscribe here to get the latest from the show. Also, if you want to check out the full episode, make sure you click the I in the top right-hand corner right now. If you want to listen to this show anywhere you go, make sure you go to anchor.fm slash the Harvey Hour or anywhere you get your podcasts.